Good afternoon, my name is Giovanni Ortega, the Instructor for the Body Series, a solo performance workshop. I'd like to take this moment to uh, stand in solidarity of the Black Lives Matter movement. The last eight weeks has been quite an array of uncertainty, but through these workshops with eight solo artists and filmmakers, we were able to create content for the Asian American experience. Today you will see the culmination and the short films that they have created, ranging from stories about childhood, about adulthood, about pain, anguish, and family. We welcome you to join us for the Body Series Short Films. <笑>喂，我都话你唔好嘈住我啦。Why did you come here? Oh my god, it's almost downloaded. 97%. You've got mail. I know, me neither. The definition is meant to be incredible. You've got mail. <laughs> no. Yeah, we just came back from vacation. I think the last time I saw you was that raid against Emperor Shreja, right? Can't believe how long that grind took us. Mrs. Long, we're taking the kids to the park. Do you want to come? You've got mail. <laughs> oh yeah, we went to Japan. Mrs. Wong? Osaka. Ate a lot of really good Mrs. food. No. We're going to the park. Huh? 
Do you want to go to Gong Yuna? Um, no. I can't right now. I have to wait for this to download. Okay. You know, I actually went to university in Japan. Studied Japanese. Gloria, can you get me another Diet Coke? Coming, Mrs. Mom. Oh, and if you want to read a really good translation, by the way, you should read Norwegian Wood. You've got mail. <laughs> Um, what's your real name again, by the way? You've got mail. Oh, yeah. John. You know who I love? John Lennon. Just bought his Mommy. wedding album with Yoko Ono. They're such a legendary Mommy. couple. No. You've Mommy, got mail. Come to the park with us. Lande Hola. I can't go until this is finished. Mommy, please. This is really important to mommy, okay? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm in Hong Kong, so it took a long time for mine to get here. Where do you live? You've got mail. <laughs> New York. My brother lived in New York, actually. He also killed himself there. You've got mail. Mrs. Wong? Sorry, Mrs. Wong? You've got mail. You sure you don't want to come to the park? Why they hold up? One percent. That's what we're waiting for, right? John. Do you see this? <laughs> we are in. Everything looks so real. I mean, look at these trees. They're barely pixelated. Where should we go first, John?
Mamia, come to the park. It's not your fault. Just come out here. Look at the trees. I'll help you. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. Hello? Hello. Okay. Maybe I'm not going crazy. Oof. Am I going crazy? I don't think you're crazy. <laughs> well, that's comforting. <laughs> Who or what are you? Who or what are you? Well, My name is June. My name is June, too. Great. I'm gonna fucking die. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I don't know. I went for a walk like an hour ago and somehow got lost. So I, I've just got to try and find the path again. But you didn't answer, answer my, my question. question. Bitch, I just told you, I, I took a left, and then a right, and then another left, and now I'm lost, so I, 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 ju I just had to find the right way to get out. Okay. Nope. No, no, no. Fuck that. This is not this kind of movie. What? Are you kidding me? What do you want? I want you to leave me alone, but that's not looking like a real option now, is it? Leave me alone. I'm trying! Is that what you want? What? What's your name? My, June! My name is June, and, and you know, most people go walking in the woods because they want some peace and quiet, not because they want to argue with... What the hell are you? I'm alone. You want to be alone. I didn't say that. Being left alone is different from being alone, okay? You are alone. Can you stop saying that? Alone. I'm going to fucking scream. Fine. Fine. What is it? Huh? What uh, life lesson do you have to impart? 
if you're not going to kill me, I'm assuming it's because you have some infuriating, inconvenient fact of existence you're going to point out to me that I've been avoiding, huh? So what is it? Can we, can we get it over with so we can just move on? Well, say something. Something. Did I break you? Come on. I'm alone. Yeah, no shit. Why do you say it like that? Huh? I'm just on a walk. Like, fuck, why is that a bad thing? You know, I think more people need to learn how to be alone. Like, you don't need five or, or ten other people's approval or, or accompaniment to just be content. You know, I think needing other people was evolution's greatest mistake. I think sometimes I could be completely and entirely happy if there were no other people in the world. Nobody to look at me. Nobody to judge. I think about what a relief that would be to, to eat what I want and wear what I want and go on long walks in the woods without having to tell anyone when I'll be back or worry about rent or work or relationships but just be. To just yeah. But then I realized, well wait, I'd still be here. All these bullshit society influences on my brain. Why do I look like this? Why do I act like this? Why do I sound like this? If I could break all the mirrors in the world and never have to look at myself again, would I be content with just me? I hate me. I hate I hate my job. I hate doing what I have to do to pay rent and buy food and live in this bullshit. But most of all, I hate when I'm taking my break and I have nothing to do but to sit and scroll through my phone and sit and feel my heart drop with every flick of my finger as I see this world inside the screen that I can't reach, that may, is maybe different from the world that's really out there, but I can sit and I can see the pictures of these strangers and I can touch the images of them, but I can't touch them. And that's what I hate about it, the, the, the sterility of it, that everyone is so fucking far away from me. I wanna walk away from it all, from, from the pictures of the strangers at the beach with the wind and the salt in their hair. And I, I hate, meeting other people and having other people be allowed to just walk away. No. 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 I... That's not right. I... I don't need other people. Last night I dropped myself onto my roommate's bed and curled up in her arms and I swear I could hear her heart beating her chest against my ear and I swear it sounded like the ocean, and I hate that I can't remember the last time I had been held in my parents' call, and it feels like drowning to repeat myself. You can't live your life being unhappy. My mother says, my mother is standing on the beach telling me to come ashore, and I have forgotten how to swim. Give it my father says, but I hate the word indefinite as much as I hate distance as much as I hate patience as much as I hate waiting every day my mouth is filling up with salt water and all I ever want to do is cry I hate that I'm allowed to love people and that those people are allowed to leave and all this hate makes me think well I'm better off alone because then I have no one to miss no one to be angry at, nowhere to put all this anger, because being a person is too fucking hard and too fucking lonely, so maybe it'd be better to not even exist. If a tape is left in the middle of the forest with no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? How do I know that I exist? You smug bitch. You cannot heal in the same environment that hurts you. My roommate says, but 
I don't know how to step out of my own skin. One day when my roommate was out of town and it was pouring as expected, I guess a, pa a tree must have hit a power line or something because I was in the middle of watching Riverdale, right? And I'm really fucking invested and suddenly the power just goes out. And I'm sitting there in the dark like an asshole. And I get up to scrounge up some candles or my fucking phone, which is charging in the other room or whatever, but I'm just suddenly struck by how alone I really am. Nobody can see me. I can't see shit, not my hands or my body or my feet or I'm just She looked like a girl, but she was actually a door. And what they wanted was the girl, her sweetness and her softness. But when they opened her up, they found a dark hallway instead. And stairs, stairs, stairs all the way down. Darling, I walk around this ghost town, crowded with revenants of the past, and wet and trampled on the floor, dirty visage future, rotting between the rain and the cardboard. Under the birch tree is a ghost of the two of us, enjoying the first sun of the season, the daisy chain going from the curls of your hair into mine. You told me that lighting cigarettes are like prayers, and the smoke from yours floated to the sky faster than Cain's or Abel's. Marching up the hill to Sacred Heart, me in a white dress, you in denim. You told me that poems are like prayers. Oh baby, your next year's prayers are graffitied on the wall. Even the nights are aglow with ghouls. In the garbage cans, they are burning the novels you've never written. How is it that nobody else sees them? All the humans are locked indoors, waiting for a vaccine. Everybody, I am Julia Roberts, runaway bride. Ha ha, just joking. I am mail order bride. My name is Vaccine, and uh, Vaccine know nowadays many people very lonely. Some people, not just lonely, also don't have money. And so today, Vaccine give free trial. Remember. Today is free, but for only a little bit more expensive than Netflix. You can have all this. Me love you long time. And you will see. 
I am more entertaining than next week. That's what you are Unforgettable Though near or far Like a song of love that clings to me How the thought of you does things to me Never before has someone been more unforgettable in every way and forevermore that's how you stay. That's why, darling, it's incredible That someone so unforgettable Thinks that I am unforgettable too When I was growing up, my biggest inspiration was my grandma, <laughs> but we all called her Mama. <clears throat> and she would call me Machong because she thought it was cuter and easier to say. <laughs> she used to call out to me, Machong, come here, Machong, come here, come here, come on, come on, Machong, come on. 
<laughs> Mama was the Filipino Celine Dion, Cher, and Barbara Streisand all rolled into one person with Eliza Minnelli haircut. <laughs> she was such a gifted singer. Um, she released a few albums in English, Tagalog, and Spanish, even though she doesn't really speak Spanish. <laughs> one thing that I remember about Mama was that she knew every damn Filipino in Las Vegas. Do you know how many titas and titos I have in all of Las Vegas? <laughs> Mama knew everyone. <laughs> she just knew how to entertain others and make you believe anything about yourself. She walked the line of truth and lies, you know, as all good grandmas do. <laughs> Mama was just very, very fond of storytelling. But it just wasn't always the most truthful, if you know what I mean. She would tell me stories of our ancestors and of my great-grandma, who I called Nanai. You know, growing up, my dad didn't want me to, to learn a lot about Filipino culture, the language, and various things about the Philippines. And so everything I learned really, you know, it was really just from my grandma and the stories that she would tell me and the experiences that we had as Asian Americans. I remember mama used to call out to me from her 1993 light blue Plymouth Voyager. She used to call out to me and say, Machung! Ah! <laughs> let's go eat Machung. Come on, Paka. In mo, come on, let's go eat. <laughs> Oh, I nako. Oh, so sorry. <sighs> my Machong is my first grandson. <laughs> you know, out of out of my four kids, his mommy was always my favorite. But my Machong will always be my first grandson. <laughs> When he was born, I was there. I was looking through the glass. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to meet my Machong. And when he got older, we shared his twin bed because he was so scared of monsters. He was so scared. And so what do I do when he gets scared? I turn on the QBC. I lay him down and I sing him to sleep. Sleep, my darling Machong. Mama is not far away. <sighs> you know, I was gifted singer in the Philippines. <laughs> when Machong was growing up, it was the five of us and him in the house. And at night, I would always sing to him because he loved, loved, loved music. Him and his nanai shared the same favorite song, Unchained Melody from the ghost movie. You know, the one with the, with the art and it's like a very sexy, you know, the one with like Patrick Swayze and he's like, Ooh. you know the one, you know, you know. But my machong was always very connected to me. He was so smart. He knew when I am sad because Machong was one of the reasons I was always happy. He knew me better than any one of my kids. When me and my kids came here in 1987, I was very stressed to provide for my family. But then, I become a grandmama, and now I can finally relax. Because you know, it is nice to have a family here in the U.S. Because they are my people. You know, I do not think I would have survived by myself. But my machong 
his mommy, my grandkids, and his nanai. They were the encouragement I needed. They were my strength to continue on. You know, I grew up with Mama. <laughs> she would show me how to live a life full of art, fun, and of course, creativity. <laughs> My Nanai is my great grandma. She was the strictest person I know, but she was so kind. <laughs> Her and my mama would always make me the food I wanted every day for breakfast. She would make me stuff like bacon and rice, pan de sal, and of course, you gotta have some banana ketchup. <laughs> um, for, for those who don't know what banana ketchup is, it is literally just sweet and spicy ketchup. But that was also another nickname that they gave me, banana ketchup. Because banana is very, very big in Filipino cuisine. And ketchup, you know, is, is very American. And so what does that make me? <laughs> I am a mixed race spicy big old freaking bottle of banana ketchup <laughs> you know i uh, um i i grew up happy and in love with life and full of celine dion songs thanks to my mama and my nanai <laughs> you know nanai would play tfc in the background and i would eat loads and loads of pancit but then, then came my little cousin, Isaiah. When the rest of my family moved to Las Vegas, I started to share my stories with him about the culture of our food, the respect of our family, and how to live a fun and creative life filled with happiness and music. Isaiah became sort of my little brother. And I became his mentor. Everything was just so great. But then people started to move out of the house until it was just me and my mom. And, you know, things, things changed. Family changed. And the status of my nanai's life, it changed. And we all dealt with it in a different way. Um, you know, for the very first time, my mama didn't know what to do. I remember being in the hospital when my nanai passed away. Mama called out to me. My job. My job. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Isaiah looked up to me to see if I was crying because we both knew if I cried, I say it cried because that was our pact. When mama was hurting, so was I. We, we all looked to each other for comfort. Isaiah to me, me to mama, and mama to us grandchildren. And We cried, we cried. And we healed, but we did it together. 
for the very first time, my mama was vulnerable. Then I truly knew what it meant to be called Matt Chung. Sumakay ako sa jeepney Ikaw ang nakatabi Hindi makapaniwala Parang mahiwagang nadama Nung tumama sa'yo Ang aking mga mata At nagsiksikan na Dahil umigil ang jeepney Sa tapat ng square To be understood as to understand. Your brain is in the present. Your brain being my brain, okay? I hear you saying present of mind, but close your eyes. Picture this. Listen to this. I 
hear you saying presence of mind, but be present in this. Your body is living a memory. Your body being my body, okay? Your body is four feet six inches tall. Your left knee is scraped because you didn't tie your shoe. Presence of mind. Your shoe being my shoe because you would never forget to tie your shoe. In this moment, I believe you are literally incapable of ever forgetting to tie your shoe. You are running, but being dragged by the hand by Camille, you being me, I'm running. I'm running to you. You being you, and Camille screams, Rachel has something to tell you. And your face drops. Your face being your face, but also being mine. Your face drops and you say, what? And you say nothing at all, you being me. And Camille looks back and forth between us. And she says after a while, well, Rachel just wanted to tell you she loves you very much. And you cannot think, you being me. You cannot think, presence of mind. And you say, well, it's very nice, you being you, and continue unpacking paper plates, presence of mind. Did you understand then? Do you understand now? Open your eyes to a memory, your eyes being my eyes, looking into your eyes. Here we are, another memory, another middle of a moment. It could be any time, you could be any height, you being you and you being me. Us two by the bathtub. You are hurt. You are fighting a fight so new and so mundane, you being me and you being you. I think you say, I never gave my mom this hard of a time. I never gave grandmama this hard of a time. You being you. You scream. You being me, you scream, but that's easy for you to say because you're perfect. And you do not expect what comes next. You being me, when you say quietly, you being you. But I'm not perfect. I'm not. Presence of mind. You are here now, you being me. And though you could not say it then, though you still find it hard to say now, you can say, you being me. I believed in you before I knew what believing was. I was protected by your strength before I knew what strength was. I feared losing you before I knew what loss was. You, jumping to catch the blue balloon I let go of outside St. Mary's Cathedral when it had already passed the spire. To be loved, as to love with all my soul. In the name of my mother, and her mother, and all the women before them. I'm not quite sure I'm your wildest dreams. I'm not quite sure what mine are. How much of me is me? How much of me is from you? How much of me is enough? I carry your names in the center of mine. I carry your face in the center of mine. I find you in me when I'm not looking, when I'm doing the opposite of looking, actually, and then I wonder how I got to be so far away. I think I knock myself down because I have lived my whole life to make you proud. But when I do that, does it go away? The first time I disappointed you, the grief knocked me down. The grief turned my heart to the heaviest stone that fell through my stomach and down my bones and through to the center of the earth. And the magma there ignited the passion to never do so again. I must never disappoint you again. But I have known that pain a thousand times. Or I think I have. I think I do. 
I think I knock myself down because I have lived my whole life to make you proud. But if you already are and it does not go away, what do I do next? What do I do with this feeling? Will I turn fear into fuel? How much of me is me? How much of me is for you? How much of me is enough? Amen, I say to you, I may not pray as often as I should, but this is my devotion. I'm not quite sure I'm your wildest dreams. I'm not quite sure what mine are. I find you in me when I'm not looking. And that is enough. And we are enough. In the name of myself, Rachel Lee Arizapa Miliana, which is mine and yours and hers too. My new journey would start at Larry's house. Larry was one of my white friends. and We had to do this school project. He was a cool cat, a guy who could charm almost anything. What's up, bro? This is my pad. Oh my gosh, it's so big. Come on, I'll show you the kitchen. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, I gotta take out my shoe. Yeah. Oh. Um, you don't take off your shoes. Oh, okay. Wait, hey, Larry, wait, wait, I got beats back on. Larry, wait, wait, wait. Larry, my son, my son, you have returned. How are you doing, my boy? Sup, Pops? What's cracking? Oh, what's cracking is you. Now, come here. Oh. So, how'd you do in that report card of yours, huh? Well, I got mostly C's, but I did get a B in English. My God, you're a smart one. I raised a smart one. You get that from your mother, though. Oh, with a noggin that big, you're going to discover something huge. You know that? Uh, oh. Um, who is this? Oh, Dad. This is Jack. We got this school project to do. Going to do it up in my room. Well, you kids have fun and don't work too hard. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Time out. What just happened here? Larry's dad compliments his son, doesn't nag him, and I could wear shoes inside the house? <sighs> right then and there, I knew what I wanted to be, what I had to become. I wanted to be a white American. I wanted to be the whitest Chinese kid you'd ever seen, the shining example of a Twinkie, and Larry was gonna be my guru showing me how to live the American way. Now, my first challenge started the next day at lunch. Yo, Jack, over here. Oh, oh. hey Larry, what's up? Oh, look at my nine o'clock. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't see anything. I, oh my God. That's, that's Danielle Sampson. Yep, the most beautiful sight I'd ever seen in my entire teenage life. Danielle Sampson. Blonde hair, green-eyed, curvy, something out of a Greek myth, epitome of beauty. She had me in her spell with just one look. Yeah, buddy. Hey, hey, hey! You're drooling and scaring off the ladies. Come on, look over here. Look over here. Look cool, look cool. Come on, come on. Sup? 
All right, Jack. If you want to hang with me, I need you to do something. I need you to walk up to the Danielle Sampson and go get her number. Yeah, that's right. Oh, come on, man. This is what dudes do. Man, you one of my dudes, right? Okay, well then one of my dudes would walk up to her and get that number. Now, come on. Oh, or, oh whoa, 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 all right, all right, chill, chill. All right? Hi. How about I give you one of my best lines, all right? All you got to do is walk up to her all cool, all right? And then get up right close to her and whisper, all right, that's it. Bro, this is foolproof, even for you. Now, come on, get up, get up, get up. Oh, God, ah, ah, Larry, Larry, Larry. Ah, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? Do I even smell right? Oh, man, I knew I should have taken a shower this morning. Uh, wait, what? Is, is, is that sweat? What? Well, I don't sweat. Even after I run a mile, I'm drier than a desert. Oh, man. Well... Larry did say that the line would work, but it was just so... Ugh. But I have to do this. I must, but I don't want to. Oh God, I think, I think I'm gonna pass out. Oh God, I think I'm gonna die. Oh man, this is so sad. I'm gonna die without even talking to a girl. It's gonna read on my tombstone, Jack Ho, laughing stock of the entire yeah. Hey, um, Danielle, Samson, ah, uh, um, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Jack, Jack Ho, <laughs> uh, uh, oh wait, 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 don't, don't wait, um, cool, all right, hey, uh, <clears throat> um, Danielle, your uh, your dad must have been a baker because uh, you have a nice set of buns, huh? Huh? Oh, wait. We ah uh, no no wait hey no wait no 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 wait 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 hey hey please calm down wait 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 I I I, I didn't mean it you see I it was it was just a joke you see oh no 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 oh oh, oh. oh. bro that was pathetic but don't worry I got you. All you gotta do is change some stuff around and you'll be a player half as good as me in no time. Right then and there, all the pain and shame left my entire body. He was gonna be my friend, my white American friend. Now, I tried really hard to adopt all of Larry's habits, his walk, his talk, but sometimes it was hard switching from the American ladies man back to the obedient, Asian son. You asked me why I've stayed silent for all these years. I remember that night when my cousins came to visit. I was probably six or seven years old. Just a child doing childish things. 
just a normal kid. But it hurt your ears, mother. It was too chaotic for you. I remember you preparing meals in advance only to taste in horror the sourness of spoiled tomatoes, the stew that was supposed to feed an entire village. Wasted, 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 wasted. Your forethought, wasted, wasted, wasted. Your image as the perfect wife, wasted. Perfect mother, waste. Just throw yourself away. Throw yourself, throw yourself away. It was too much for you. You sure as hell wasn't going to get any help from anyone. I remember running around with the other kids that day. Round and round and round. Round and round and round. Passing through your knees, laughing as loud as anyone else. <laughs> you kept telling me to stop. 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 <sighs> Until finally you pulled me aside into the kitchen. We went to the sink and pulled a small knife from the drawer and started to slice. Your thumb, a half inch deep or so, just deep into the flesh to draw blood. I saw it drip onto our stainless steel sink. Drip, drip, drip. Drip, drip, drip. And you ask me again, Will you be quiet now? I lost my innocence that day. The ability to laugh and play with abandon, knowing that the cost would always be your blood. You silenced me that day. I've been silent ever since. Blood has always been your way. You used it to meld me. <coughs> now it's my turn to silence the guilt. Never ending guilt of this American life. I pledge allegiance to who? You or you or you or, or you, you or you. The ghosts of the past, the expectations that I will never live up to be the person you want me to be. In this country, you need to scream at the top of your lungs if you're yellow like me, if you want to be heard. But you silenced me that day, and that primal rage built up inside of my head, my heart ready to explode. Will you? Be quiet now. Will you be quiet? Will you be quiet? Will you be quiet? 
I'm going to show you what blood can do. Please, please, please. Please, please. So what are we going to do about the boy? Boys? Why does he have to like boys? Putting in a parang bakla. Do you always have to use that word? He's not a bak bakla. He's gay. Yes, and I'll have you know that bakla is an epithet. It's a Tagalog word that usually refers to someone's gender, typically a man who embodies feminine traits or practice transvestism, but because of colonialism and imperialism, many Filipinos have conflated gender and sexuality, referring to anyone not heterosexual in modern Western Filipino culture as a bakla. Stop using that word, number one. It's offensive. It's true, diba? Sinasabi ko na. If we're talking about what we're gonna call Jairus, can we maybe change his name? <sighs> Why would we do that? Well, it's like really hard to spell and say Jairus. And I figure that if we can call him Cedric, like his middle name, it'll make it so much easier to like spell, especially for the like White people, you know what I mean? Okay, we are not here to change his name. We are here to talk about this new guy he likes. Are you a guy? Ah, finally! I've been waiting for this moment for the longest time. It's been such a long time. Did he get that feeling in his stomach? Like, with the butterflies? And, you know, did when they met, was it like that moment in Aladdin when Aladdin and Jasmine finally met and they fell in love? Has anyone noticed that all the movies and TV shows that Jairus and number four romanticize all have Caucasian people in it? Do you always have to into, intellectu intellectualize everything? What's wrong with considering that everything he consumes is produced within the confines of capitalism? Capitalism is a system built on shadow slavery and indigenous genocide. Not to mention, there aren't that many mainstream TV shows or movies that he can look up to. What about Love, Simon? Don't even get me started on the white gaze. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be white. What if he just wants to change his name to fit in? The white people. Haven't I said this before? First, the Spaniards colonized the Philippines. And I don't see anything the wrong with wanting to be white. Like, what if the I just want to stand aside where I'm posing their Western and like, not get too dark? Like, like, what's wrong with being a dark? 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 What's wrong with Hi everyone. Hello. Jairus. How are you? I'm doing okay. What's going on here? We are here. Just discussing this new guy in your life. Are you in love? See, we haven't even talked about that yet. We're just here to talk about this new guy in your life, but that's next on the agenda. Well, I have something to offer. I think I act That's not how things work around here, Jairus. Well, I want to say something, but I can't hear that. But we're here to protect you. I'm here to protect you. Remember what happened to the last guy? You know, we are all here to make the best informed decision about any guy, 
about the next big life decision you have, about you, for you. Shouldn't I be part of that conversation since it is about me? He's not wrong. And what do you think that will accomplish? I don't know, maybe I can make my own decision. The last time, so it doesn't matter what happened last time, I can make decisions for myself. Yeah, and Jairus has always dreamed of, you know, going out there and becoming a director and an actor and a producer and a model and an author and a writer. And we haven't even talked about his future yet. Why? I say we let him in on the conversation. This is his life. If not this guy, what about the rest of his life? We can't keep making decisions for him. No! Oh! Tyrus, I am tired of seeing you hurt, of seeing you cry. I'm tired of seeing you rip yourself apart to find a reason to love yourself in this goddamn world. That's why we're here. To protect you from all that pain and that violence and the trauma to make the best well-informed decision for you. I don't care if you've grown. I don't care if you have this mind of yourself, but we are here for you. Aren't you tired of feeling horrible about yourself? Aren't you tired of making dumb decisions that are not in your favor? That's why we're here. Do you know what they say about brown people? Do you know what they say about gay people? Do you know what they say about people who don't look like a fucking white devil for Christ's sake? No. Because we're here. So you could just sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up. Or you don't want to play along and, and do things the way we do things here. And you can just get out and wake the fuck up. You can't do that. Because this is my space. And I am not going to let my trauma define my life for me. And if you can't get with that, then you can leave. Because this is my life, and I for sure as hell am not my trauma.